Hey guys, so today I am going to talk about Weiss and why I'm collecting it and what I've learned. Angel Beats is on Netflix. I actually didn't finish it, but I did enjoy it, I think, the first few episodes. I don't really have all that time to watch that much anime. This is like the funny meme person. <laughs> her artwork is so bad. Um, yeah, her artwork is just so bad that it's pretty funny to meme about it. This card goes for more than a dollar. I'll just put it that way. I'll just put it that way. And it's actually one of the best sellers when you take it into a convention. Nisekoi, Nisekoi. I definitely would get more Nisekoi. Uh, Love Life is very popular. I've gone into that. This card definitely is one of the best sellers. I think it sells for like a few dollars now. But uh, when I was selling for a dollar a piece at the convention, it definitely sold out. It was one of those cards that just bam, gone. Persona 4, uh, there's Luffy, and yeah, I guess I'll just do Persona 4. Okay, so why have I decided to collect Weiss? Um, here's the thing, right? I own, a to I own a toy store, and at the toy store, at a convention especially, so at the toy store, this is less true than a convention, if you have a binder like this and you put it out on the table and it, you know, I did this with Inuyasha scorecards from 2005, people actually will buy it because it's probably, you know, let's say they have a few dollars and they're not looking, everything else at the convention in the artist gallery is like $20 or more. Maybe there's some pins and knickknacks, but even the knickknacks are like five or $6, like the enamel pins and the things. So people are coming to the anime convention and they want to see anime. They want to see like, oh, fairy tale, cool, or love life. Love life, when we were doing conventions, was the number one selling product. And that's my, and you might be like, oh, why do you have so much love life and idol masters and things? Because at one time, so let me tell you the strategy behind these animes, which is a lot different. You don't just have one or two main characters. You have nine main characters. And each of these main characters has a following. So it's almost like nine animes wrapped up in one anime where then you can push the product on. And the beauty of this is if they, so some people just have one of the nine that they like. Some people wanna collect all nine. So if you have um, an Ellie Halloween figure and it goes for a hundred uh, and you sell it for 150, the person who buys the Ellie, if they have enough money, is gonna to wanna to buy the other eight figures. It's almost like why does do why is a dual land so much better in terms of investment than a you know than a one of card? It's because you need four of them to play Legacy. Well, I mean EDH is a little different now, but like let's go back in time where we didn't have EDH, so we just had Legacy, and you need four of them, and you need four Fetch lands, and the person who needs one Fetch land, the person who needs one Verdum Catacomb they probably would like to buy free more for their deck. And that is what this whole love life thing was. So again, it's a big risk. I have invested greatly into this love life Weiss collection. Um, I don't know how it's gonna turn out. I can tell you I have <laughs> thousands of dollars invested in the love life and the idol masters. And I'm not too disappointed because once a convention opens up, then you sell your Idol Master deck that you bought from Amazon for six bucks, for 10 bucks, and I think it will sell. And you sell your Weiss product, your Miser set that you got for 29 bucks or $30 or tax for $40, and it will sell. And these are items that I know are quite popular. So Weiss cards are kind of like Inuyasha cards or old school Dragon Ball Z cards or Naruto cards. They bring a lot of traffic to the area because the let's say that you're, you're an artist so the the one company we really compete against is other toy stores and you want to keep the you want the attention of the person so the person that's coming to you is normally you know an anime person their intention span is very very small so but what they like to do is they like sorting cards. They want to figure out, oh, this is this card a good deal? Is that card a good deal? So you have all these people sitting at your booth and there's lines of people looking at cards. And then someone else might be like, oh, hey, you know, that's a pretty cool booth. Let me go check it out. It looks busy. 
So the worst thing for a booth at a convention is now, obviously we're talking pre COVID-19, of course, right? <laughs> is that there's no one there. There are more people, it sounds kind of silly. The more people at the booth, even if they're buying 10 cents or 25 cents or 50 cent cards or even dollar cards, which we probably price Riku at like a dollar. Uh, we probably price all of these at a dollar. We buy them in for about 50 cents and then we try to sell them for a buck with like an anime sleeve. And the anime sleeves can get really pricey. So the anime sleeve is more pricey than a card sometimes, depending on what anime sleeve it is. Uh, but we buy them in bulk, so we do get them a little cheaper than normal. So the person, the customer feels like they get a little bit of value. And uh, that's my strategy. It's very, very simple. It is, you know, get as many people to spend as much time. So, okay, again, I'm going to compare it to like um, an artist. So we always have, like, when you're in um, the vendors or they put you kind of close to the artist gallery, but if they put you in the artist gallery because you also saw, sell artwork and you just so happen to sell toys of the nature. Um, no, you have to do, I think we've always done vendor now because we got towed off for doing artist gallery one time. But when you're in a vendor thing, you want as many people in a small space as possible. And there's no better way to do this than to have like boxes and binders of cards. Then you spread out and then they start buying and then the cash flowing. And then that's how you get the big customers to buy your anime figures. Because then they're like, oh, hey, that booth looks real busy and they got some really great anime figures because they're looking at the anime figures on top. They don't know that the majority of your traffic is just, at least from a distance, is just people buying 10 cents or $1 cards, which then again makes them happy. I mean, we had plenty of people who in the first Friday, they buy these, you know, cards and then they come back to buy the figures because then, you know, oh, Tulare Community College is going to have a fit if I show that card. Oh, geez. <laughs> Tulare Community College. This would not be the booth for him. Let me play that way. It would not be the booth for Tulare Community College because he gets offended by anime, you know, very easily. He's very offended by anime, I find out in his videos. I still watch his videos. He's a funny guy, but definitely he would be offended by the booth for sure. But you're in an anime convention. So you're in a vendor thing. You're the cheapest person selling toys. Everyone else is selling. The cheapest toy they have is a Funko figure, $15. You have cards for a dollar or less that they can, you know, spend time and look. I mean, that's what they want. They want the experience of like interacting and talking to you about their favorite show, talking to, you know, a stranger who's also looking for the cards. And once one of them buys it, it's like a feeding frenzy. And we sell out of these all the time. You'd be surprised. Like we take... So I had two binders to show you. We, we take these two binders, I guarantee you. So it depends on the anime, right? Um, and I don't always know what's popular or not. So I could say love life popular and then it could be like really unpopular. So it's kind of one of these weird things that when the anime is active, it's very popular like um, Demon Slayer. But then when the anime like rotates out, it's not popular at all until it becomes retro. Like kill a kill, I can tell you is, I mean, I can't get my hands on those cards because they're so retro popular. So it might be like some YouTuber now likes it or something and, and then now they're promoting it and people rewatching it on Netflix and now it's, you know, they want to, or maybe it's really one of these things like, oh, I watched Angel Beats on Netflix like two years ago. Here's an Angel Beat card. I never see Angel Beat merchandise. Let me buy this card because it's the only merchandise in this whole venue that has angel beats and that's how it works that's how we sell actually you know i'm getting a shipment of a risk of goals supposedly they're very beautiful i don't know i can order like 200 more of them so it's a pretty interesting price point and i do get them from gamestop <laughs> like a lot of you don't understand this okay you have your distributor price right which you know and if your distributor price is more expensive than GameStop price, you don't buy from your distributor, you just buy from GameStop and you know that's a good price. So I'm always buying from GameStop, Best Buy, and these, especially when they have sales. The GameStop used to have a buy one, get one free pack sale on Pokemon. Did you know this? It's crazy, right? It sounds hilarious. So at the buy one, get one free sale, it actually was cheaper to buy packs from GameStop than it was to buy packs from my distributor because my distributor is not working. So then why would it, so for those months, I say, F you distributor, I'm buying from GameStop. 
So they used to have a thank Black Friday sale. They used to have so that was um, November. I just went November. They used to have a Christmas sale and they had a New Year sale, where it was buy one get one free. So I mean that's the one thing that you work on. It's like if TCG Player is cheaper than your distributor or Amazon, I buy a lot. People don't get this either. I buy a lot of product from Amazon because it, I have the distributor price in front of me and then I have the Amazon price and the Amazon price is cheaper than the distributor price. So obviously why would I order from my distributor? I just buy out from Amazon. Anyway, bye guys.